If you want to become an expert C-Shop developer, you have to know about software design patterns. One very popular pattern is the singleton pattern. So if you need that pattern for your job right now, or if you just want to become a better C-Shop developer, stick around until the end of the video to really find out how to master this pattern. Now, let's get started. Now the C-Sharp Singleton Design Pattern is incredibly popular and if you're interested in in-depth software engineering, you have to know how to use it. So here I got a brand new console application in .NET 6 and by default we got that program.cs file, you can see it right here with that nice top level statement. However, I created a new class called Upload Service. So I don't want to call it Singleton or something like that because that's not a typical naming convention. So let's just assume that we want to create any kind of functionality and I decided to stick around with an upload service. So something that uploads something to the internet or something like that. And we want to have that class as a singleton implemented. Now let's talk about the word singleton first. So singleton means that you can only have a single instance of that class to be created, right? Singleton, single makes sense. So if we have one instance of the upload service, then there can not be another one. That's the singleton design pattern. So there is one important information that you uh, should know about the singleton design pattern and it is that we have to make it thread safe and you will learn what that means and how to do it during the video. Alrighty, so let's get started. Let's turn this internal class here that I just have created into a singleton. Okay, so here we got our internal class. The first thing that I want to do is I want to remove the internal. We will just replace that with another keyword in a second. Let's get started by creating a constructor. So simply write down ctor and hit tap tap. Now best practice is not to add any kind of parameters because that's against the pattern. If you would need any parameters then a singleton is not really what you're looking for because a parameter for sure can be variable but we only want to have one specific instance. There are other design patterns which you should use instead, for example the factory one. So we want to keep that uh, constructor here empty. Now let me shorten that up, let me bring that into a single line of code here so that we don't want to add anything and very important we want to switch that not from being public but private instead because only the class itself should be able to create an instance. So we should not be able to create instances of that upload service from outside of this class because well that's against the singleton pattern. If any other class from outside here could create an instance then we could not be sure that only a single instance of that uh, service exists. Now next up we want to add a reference to the actual instance. This is why we add a private static, very important, make it static. Let's call it upload service, right? Because the instance is of this type and let's call it instance. Now we make it private because in a second we will create a static method which uh, gives us the information about the instance so we can make it private here and we make it static so that we don't need any instantiation well, to have a singleton instance. So now let's write down a method which gives us the information about the instance. You want to call that method to get the instance actually. We want to make it public, we want to make it static and for sure it returns the upload service and then let's call it instance. Awesome, great. Now the basic code behind this, you can see that already suggested here is like if the instance that we have here in line 13, if that instance is null, so if it's equals to null, so if we don't have an instance, we want to create one. So new upload service, right? So if we don't have an instance, create an instance. And now finally, we want to return something from that method and for sure we want to return the instance. Awesome. So basically, this would be a very simplified version of a singleton. It would be already working, but there is this one problem. However, as you can see from a logical side of view, that will work. We don't have an instance, we create one, but if we have an instance, so that one will not become true, the if statement will become false, right? And we will directly return the existing instance. So if we don't have an instance, we create a new one. If we have an instance, we simply return the existing one. Awesome. So the next part of this video is really very, very important. But before we get to that, make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you no longer miss any upcoming .NET related videos. And if this video helps you out and you like it, make sure to give it a thumb up to support our channel and so that we know what content you really want to see. Oh, and by the way, 
we got an online course, a very unique online course. We call it the C-Sharp Progress Academy. Well, it teaches you ASP.NET Core, Angular, software design patterns, and test-driven development. Basically, in 21 days, you can go through it in your own speed. And I'm absolutely sure about that this is the fastest way to become a better C-Sharp developer. So if you really want to become a .NET hero, check out our C-Sharp Progress Academy. You can find the link in the description below or in the info card popping up right now. Great, so now let's get to the second part of this video. Basically, even though this pattern here is working right now, it's pretty simplified because in real world, we need to create a singleton pattern, which is thread safe. So as long as you only have a single thread in your application, this pattern here is fine. But if you have a multi-threaded application, we need to make sure that we add a lock here so that another thread is not creating a new instance again when we start the program. So basically, so that you get the idea, it's like if we have multiple threads and we start up the application and those threads are starting, we need to make sure that only one thread is creating the instance and not another thread is also creating one because it sees like, okay, the instance is not. And this is why we use the keyword lock. So we create a lock object and then uh, one thread will reach this position, the lock, and all other threads will wait until it's finished. But we will see that in action now. It sounds more complicated than it is, and it's really a nice practice. And if you are a, well, c -sharp beginner or kind of intermediate, I'm pretty sure that you have never used the lock before. Now let's see that in action. Let's create a private, static, and read-only object. And this one, we call it lock. And it's basically a new object. This is all what we have to do right here. So just a simple static read only object. Now the magic happens inside of our instance creation. So right here, right at the position where the instance is null, right? Just imagine that we have multiple threads which come into that instance method and they see, okay, the instance is null. So at the moment we start the program and the threads reach that position, the threads will see that the instance is null and multiple instances would get created and that's a violation against the singleton pattern. So what we want to do is we want to use the lock keyword here and we want to lock and send in our lock object. Now inside here, we basically want to repeat the code that we have right here. So again, inside the lock, I want to say if instance is equals to null, then we want to create a new instance of that upload service. So take that line of code here, cut it out, paste it back in here, and we're done. So let me explain that to you. So we start the program and both threads are starting. They will come both into that instance method here. They will both see that the instance is null because it doesn't, didn't get created yet. So in the previous code, both threads would now create an instance. And that's wrong because we have a singleton pattern. So we only have a single instance shared between all threads. The entire application only has one instance of it. So both threads are in line 18 right now. They will come to line 21. And the lock keyword basically means that now a single thread will proceed through it while the other threads are waiting. So let's say thread one will work through this and thread two is waiting in line 20 until the first thread is done. So from the side of thread one, we will now go inside this code block. He will again see instance is null. He will create an instance now. So now we have an instance in our application. Okay, so we are done. Let's switch over to the second one because he will wait at the log or he's still waiting, but now thread one is done. So thread two will proceed from here. He will now take a look again. Is the instance null? But no, the instance is not null anymore because thread one created an instance. And so the if statement will not become true. And instead he will know about the instance of the object which thread one has created and he will simply end that if statement and return the existing instance. And in that way, we have created or implemented a singleton software design pattern, which is thread safe. Alrighty, so now let's prove that this is actually working. Let's switch over to our program.cs and let's first of all start using our upload service here. Now, first things first, let's start using the system so that we are able to create threads. And that's what we want to do. We want to go ahead and we want to create a thread here. So thread, let's call it uh, T1, just to keep it short, equals to a new thread. And inside that thread, we want to go ahead and create a new, let's just do it that way, arrow function here. And we basically just want to run a single line of code. We want to call our upload service. And for that, we're going to use the namespace, design pattern, singleton here. 
There we go, so that we get access to the service. And then we wanna just call the upload service here. And we got a method inside of it, which is called instance for sure. So let me just break that into another line of code. There we go. And let me add a breakpoint here. So for instance, there we go. And I wanna add a breakpoint here in line seven. And I wanna copy that over. And I wanna go thread two, the same stuff. Again, I wanna add a breakpoint. Now let's simply start both threads. So start both of them. Very important that we do it in, in that order here so that we're really able to test it in a valid way. And then we wanna join. So T1, T2, starting them, joining them. There we go. Now we wanna have any kind of uh, ID or something like that so that we can really make a difference between, um, between well, the instances, right? So this is where we go into our instance here. Let's simply uh, add an integer here. Let's call it ID. And right here at the upload service, let's add a property. Let's call it prop. Let's call it int ID. There we go. We can simply call get. We make private set. Really, this is just for validation. So get private set. And when we create a new instance, we want to take the instance and set the ID to whatever the user submits right here in the instance method. So let's switch over to the program. Let's say this is instance uh, ID one and this is instance ID two, right? Now let's hit start. And basically both instances should be ID one, right? Because we create your upload service instance, we set in one and we call it a second time instance and we send in the two, but that one should not create a new instance. So the first one should get used instead. So if we hover above instance and we see ID one, which is fine, perfect. Right, so let's press continue. Now we come to the second breakpoint. Let's take a look at instance again, and the ID is still one. If we take a look, we could see, okay, the instance run into a lock. So we waited at the lock with the second thread and the first thread created the instance with ID one. So our second thread never created a new instance and never set the ID. So this is the proof that even though we have two separated threads, we have a single instance used in our application now. Now at the very beginning, I removed the internal access modifier and I said we will replace it and we will replace it with the sealed keyword, which basically means that you are not able to inherit from that upload service, which makes again sure that we only have a single instance of that class in our application. Awesome. So now you know how to apply the C Sharp Singleton software design pattern. And if you liked that video, make sure to give it a thumb up and to subscribe to our channel so that you no longer miss any advanced C Sharp.net videos. Again, if you really want to dig deeper into advanced C Sharp topics, make sure to check out our C Sharp Progress Academy. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I see you next time.